So, how to maximize your buy to let property profits coming up. Welcome back to The Property Pilot. My name is Marco. I'm a property investor, developer, and mentor. And today, really important video, we're talking about how you can maximize your buy-to-let property profits. Yes, that's right. We've assumed you've already got one, two, or maybe many more buy-to-let properties. And I'm going to give you some really good tips and tricks on how to maximize your profits. And maybe you can boost your return on investment, make more money from your current buy-to-let property, and maybe use that to reinvest and buy even more property. Now, I've had a look on YouTube YouTube, and there aren't many videos that actually talk about this in a, in a lot of detail. In fact, there are hardly any. A lot of people are talking about, you know, the cash required to purchase a buy-to-let property. But what they're not talking about is how to maximize existing buy-to-let properties. So I'm going to give you several tips and tricks in this video on how to do that. And let's break this down into two topics. Well, like any business, you've got money coming in, you've got your income, in other words, your rents, and you've got money going out, your expenses. So we're going to talk about these two areas. And let's start with income and rents. So first of all, this is a really key and crucial point. You need to be conducting rent reviews on all your properties, all your buy-to-let properties. Now, how often should you do this? At an absolute minimum, every 12 months. So the reason why we need to be conducting these rent reviews, as maybe after 12 months, the going rate for that type of property in that area may have increased. Not only that, but inflation has, has worked its magic and maybe over 12 months means you need to increase your rent to account for inflation or at least to account for part of inflation. So it's really important that you see what similar properties are going for within your area and understand what the going rate, the market rate is for your buy-to-let property. And if you don't know how to do this, I'll give you a really good trick. First of all, get the postcode of your property, put it into right move and click to let. Now, but let's expand the radius by about a quarter of a mile, but not too large. Once I've expanded the radius, let's just narrow down the results. So put in however many bedrooms your property is. Is it a house? Is it a flat? Again, type in that variable. Now we want to tick the button that says let's agreed, because this is also going to show all the results where properties have already been let. So that gives us a good indication of what price points these properties are renting for. Simply browse the results and find the ones that are best similar to your property. And maybe take an average of five results to come up with an idea of what the current market value, the current rental value of your property is. Now, once you've got this current market value, you then can use this to either increase the rent to that, or if you've got a really good tenant in there, and you know maybe as a gesture of goodwill, you're able to offer them a slight discount. So let's say the market rate, make the math nice and easy, is a thousand pounds per month for this particular kind of property. Maybe the tenants are currently paying 900 pounds. Well, you could meet somewhere in the middle. Maybe you could suggest a new rent of 950 or 975 pounds per month and give them a slight discount for their you know, custom and for their loyalty. And maybe they looked after the property also. So conducting annual rent reviews is so important to maximizing your profitability. In fact, I had a chat earlier in the week with an investor who's got several buy to let properties. He hasn't increased his rents in four or five years. And we can't calculated, he's missing out on about three or four thousand pounds every year in rent just because he hasn't conducted those rent reviews. So this is how important it is to undergo timely rent reviews and to ensure you're maximizing your profitability. Okay, you're not going to raise the rents to market value for a great tenant. You know, you want to give them, show them a gesture of goodwill. But when it comes to reletting that property, of course, you want to obtain market rates for it. Especially now, it's ever so important to do this. You know, as buy-to-let investors will know, you know, in the past years, mortgage costs are increasing and the one way we can offset this is by passing some of this on to the tenant. And this is a great way to offset your increased mortgage costs. Now, let's face it, since September 2022, all our mortgage costs have been increasing. So if you can increase your rent in a fair way, again, this is a great way of recouping some of those additional mortgage costs. So my final point on rents before we come on to expenses, which is really a key area of this video, is consider getting your rent in advance. I don't know about you, but where I operate, the demand for rental accommodation is absolutely crazy. People are willing to pay six or 12 months in advance. And again, if you can get this money in advance, that's absolutely great. You can do something with that cash and it's great for cash flow. Okay, you won't really be maximizing your profits, but you're gonna have that cash in the bank far earlier. You can do something with that cash. And not only that, maybe you could be earning interest also. And again, it reduces the risk because if you're getting cash up front, obviously you're not really giving your tenants an opportunity to not pay the rent. So it does make life a hell of a lot easier. So that's enough for rents, but let's come on to the expense side of it. Now, the biggest expense for those with mortgages is obviously your mortgage. Uh, and as I've alluded to, since September 2022, everyone's mortgage
mortgage costs have been increased. And this isn't just a small increase. Some people's mortgages have doubled, if not more than doubled. So again, it's really important to keep these costs under control. So this is a really good opportunity if you're on a variable rate or you haven't assessed your mortgage in several years, speak to a mortgage broker. You know, he or she will be able to best advise you and maybe save you money on whatever you're currently paying out, especially if you're on a variable rate, your mortgage has lapsed onto the variable rate, your fixed term has expired. Certainly you have to speak to a mortgage broker. And if you're looking for a very good mortgage broker, one that I know, I like I use personally and I trust head to my website www.ms7.uk click on use our team and I'll put you in touch with the mortgage broker that I use and he will be able to help you out so we've gone on for the biggest cost which is mortgages let's come on to management and management is an interesting concept and an interesting topic which a lot of people you know have their own opinions on let's say for example you're giving your property to an agent to manage and maybe you're paying 10 12 percent plus VAT of your rents for the agent to manage this property well I'll give you a few areas and how you can save money. First of all, if you're putting volume for your agent, maybe you've got three, four, five plus properties, well, why don't you negotiate that fee? Maybe you can bring it down to 8%. Lots of agents are more than happy to negotiate and bring down that fee if you're giving them volume. That's number one. Number two, you know, maybe can you step down from a fully managed service to a let's only service and pay a bit less? So yes, you're going to have to take on the management and you're going to have to take on the maintenance, but that agent will find you a tenant in the first instance. And actually, it's far easier to maintain a manager property than most people think. Even if you're 200 miles away, or even if you're in a different country or time zone, there are many ways to automate this and you physically do not have to be there to maintain and manage and look after the property. So again, you'll be able to save money by moving from the fully managed product to the let only product. I hope this helps. We can even take this one step further. You know, do you really even need the let only service? You know, there are lots of ways to advertise and find great tenants for free. So again, you could do this providing you know someone in the area that can do viewings on your behalf. And if you don't, you can use websites like Viewber to hire someone just to conduct the viewings. And you know, maybe it's gonna cost you 100, 200 pounds in total costs for you to find a tenant rather than paying an agent a thousand pounds, for example. So let's move from management to maintenance and the costs we incur to keep the property right and in good working order. Now, what I do with all my properties is I know exactly what I'm spending on each of my properties. And I'll go through this and I think, hmm, well, you know, what can I save here? What could I do differently in the future? And what you'll find is, you know, maybe it's actually getting someone else in to do the work. Some trades that you've worked with in the past may have increased their prices substantially. Or again, you know, can you negotiate a really good discount on trades, again, for putting volume through them? And what I mean here is, well, let's face it, if a property's got gas, it needs to have its annual gas safety checked on the CP12. Well, you know, if you can give, say, 20 of these to a gas engineer every year, well, you can negotiate a lower fixed fee per gas safety check per CP12. And again, not only are you saving saving money, but again, you're benefiting from economies of scale. Again, you can do the exact same with the EICRs, the Electric Installation Condition Reports. So again, these don't have to be done as often every five years, but if you've got a good number of properties, negotiate you know, a lower fixed fee with your electrician and give them all the work. And again, that's a great way of saving some money. Well, you know, if you're struggling to find a good tradesperson, you know, and certainly you're struggling to find a tradesperson at a good price, well, head over to mybuilder.com and you can list your job there. And the nice thing, I like about my builder is, you know, everyone is bidding on your work. So they're actually keen to do the work. How frustrating is it when you call a tradesperson and they're just not bothered and they don't really want the work? And I, you know, sometimes I don't like to deal with those types of people and those types of trade because it doesn't really mean anything to them. I want to work with people whose my custom means a lot to them. So again, a great way of doing this is heading to my builder and putting a job advert out there. And obviously the people that reply are keen and they want the work. And again, it's a great way to actually put the job out for tender because you can actually request in the description that they give you a quote for the works. And you don't get me wrong, you're not necessarily going to choose the cheapest, but it's a great way of maybe trying to get a good discount and trying to get jobs done at a lower rate than what you were previously paying. So a few more expense related tips before we conclude the video. Well, first of all, again, if you're buying in volume, speak to your solicitor and I'm sure they'll give you a good deal based on all the legal work and legal fees. Again, you know, if you're buying, you know, five a year or something like that, they'll probably be more than happy to give you a slight discount on the legal fees and the legal work. And therefore, again, that's meaning you're putting less cash into that property so your return on capital employed will increase slightly. Again, if you're running a HMO or serviced accommodation where you pay for the bills personally, again, you need to make sure you're on the best possible tariff. So consider switching your utility supplier to someone that's more competitive and has a better rate. And again, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much you can save by switching, even now when you know switching isn't really encouraged because energy bills and prices are going up. 
I recently switched suppliers and saved quite a lot of money. So they're the ways how you can cut your costs and reduce your expenses, which of course maximizes your profitability. So I hope this video has given you several key tips and tricks on how not only can you increase your rents and income, but reduce your expenses, which maximizes your profitability. Now I guarantee that even if you do a handful of these suggestions that I've made in this video, you'll be saving yourself hundreds of pounds per year per property. And again, this amounts up to quite a serious chunk. You know, if you've got several properties and you're saving say 200 pounds per year, well all of a sudden you're in a four figure saving and that's, you know, a holiday for most people. So again, I've got you a free holiday. Now in return for that, I would like you to consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. As you know, it really does mean a lot to me personally. You know, I love to see this channel grow and I love to see people get value from the content that I put out. It just makes everything a bit more meaningful and all this effort, time and energy I put into creating these videos, you know, it's nice to see that reward and people are actually getting something from it. So thank you for all the positive feedback. It does mean a lot to me. Now for those subscribed to the channel, you know, Tuesday and Thursday at two o'clock, I release a full length video. So stay tuned for that. And if you're still looking for help with your buy to let property, you know, maybe you've got a couple of buy to let properties and you're struggling to maybe put a strategy together and purchase at great price points and scale your property portfolio from maybe one, two, three properties to 10 or 20 properties within years and not decades. Well, head to my website, www.ms7.uk and book a call with me. I'm very passionate about helping people scale their portfolios in a very short time span and learning from all the lessons and mistakes that me and fellow investors have made. And you can fast track that journey and do that within a couple of years and not 10 or 20 years. So thank you very much for watching and the very best luck with your property investing day. Goodbye.